Hey guys, this is White Monkey here with a new video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the worst mistake I see artists make with regards to manga. Keep in mind that this is just my opinion and it's okay if you guys do not agree with it completely. We can have a little discussion in the comment section below. I just wanted to share my thoughts and in a way kind of give advice on the topic. In fact, what I'm about to say is something I feel I was guilty of a while back. But now with more work that I make, I tend to adjust and correct myself as I improve as an artist overall. For those who don't know me, I'm the creator of Apple Black, uh, published and serialized in Saturday AM. Saturday AM is the diverse digital magazine that features several interesting comics, including Apple Black. You can read the first four chapters of Apple Black free. All links will be in the description below. But you can also purchase Apple Black Volume 1 for the first nine chapters. And you can all check that out. Check out Saturday AM and all the other content that is on Saturday AM with diverse and interesting comics like Clock Striker, Saigami, and Bully Eater, and much more. To keep things visually pleasing, I'm going to be drawing Saturday AM issue 72's cover, which are my characters that grace the cover here. We have Jade and Jahal, and these are characters from Apple Black, obviously. And in this issue, which will be free, it will also have details on Apple Black Volume 2 with release and other cool stuff, including an interview uh, with me uh, talking about just my growth overall and you know social media and all that good stuff including little details about volume 2 and you can check out all the other comics that would be in the issue including the installment of Apple Black within that issue which is kind of like a certain amount of pages from volume 2 so enough chit chat what is this mistake that I speak of I think it's the slight misconception of what manga truly is at its core and this is as a result of the lack of research people do when they're trying to make mangas and thinking that there are certain rules when there really aren't to be simply put manga and comics are essentially the same thing fight me okay I'm just kidding but seriously they are essentially the same thing today manga is often referred to as comics that are made in a certain aesthetic originating from Japan. But I think there are a couple misconceptions to what that aesthetic actually is. So the core mistake is simply just that lack of research to what manga actually is. Manga literally translates to comic strips. I think people need to understand that the reason why the comics in Japan have a certain look is kind of due to their culture and just production and sometimes saving costs and things of that nature. Uh, the reason why it's read right to left and that's the reading orientation is because that's the reading orientation in Japan in general. If the book is going to be published in Japan, you want the book to have the reading orientation of Japan, which is from right to left. If the comic was going to be published in the Western world, then you want the reading orientation of the Western world, which is left to right. Same thing if the book was going to be uh, published in Arabic, then you'd go right to left. So I'm saying basically that the reading orientation of a comic doesn't make it manga. Why are the comics in black and white or black and white and grayscale? If you notice, Japanese comics are usually long running and grayscale comics or black and white comics are cheaper to make. Also, there are some black and white comics here in the West as well. So does that make them manga? So what? there's this confusion as to what's manga and what's not when really at the end of the day, at their core, they're essentially the same thing. It doesn't have to be made in Japan. You don't have to be Japanese. The story doesn't need to take place in Japan and the characters don't need to be Japanese as well. I think the controversy on my end comes in when I disagree with the criteria of what makes a comic manga or what makes a manga comic. I already view everything as manga and as comic, similar to anime. You don't have to be, it doesn't have to be in Japan, it doesn't have to have Japanese characters, it doesn't have to be made by Japanese people. I mean, even all anime at the end of the day have certain parts of the production done in other countries. It's outsourced to countries like India or South Korea, things of that nature. So it doesn't have to be, everything doesn't have to be Japanese. The title of your comic doesn't have to be Japanese. Uh, not everyone should have like colorful spiky hair. You don't necessarily try, need to mimic that Japanese culture every time. I think comics and our manga and manga is comics. And uh, what makes a manga a manga to me doesn't make any sense. Same thing with anime. If, if Spongebob was made in Japan and, you know, it was released in Japan, they're not going to call it cartoon. It's still like it, it's still animation. Anime literally translates to animation. Anime just means animation. Manga just translates to comic strips. I understand why people would still want to use the words. And when I use the words, it's just to distinguish um, the difference in styles and aesthetics because you know, Japanese animation tends to have that style, that style of, a, of production and animation that is originating from 
Japan. But it doesn't really make it any different from other cartoons or other animation from other parts of the world. So I'm not saying that there are zero differences. I'm saying that they're essentially the same thing. And the differences between, uh, say, a, a, ma a manga, a Japanese comic, and a Western comic are the same differences you would find between a Western comic and a completely different Western comic. Both Western comics will have different art styles, different coloring styles, different styles in general. You know, the whole topic of styles is also something that we can make a tangent on, but style includes everything you do. Every, literally everything is under that umbrella of style. The way you draw everything, the way you produce everything, the tools you use, how you use the tools, it's all under style. So each comic has a different style. Same way you look at a Naruto and you look at a Bleach, there are different styles all over the place. The differences there are the same differences you'd find between a Naruto and a Spider-Man, and that's the same differences you find between a Spider-Man and a Batman. Again, I understand why you would still use the terms manga and anime just to distinguish and have let people have a clear understanding of what you're talking about. It's easier to say anime uh, to let people automatically think about Japanese uh, cartoons, Japanese animation uh, versus say calling uh, something like a gumball anime. You know, some people might just be a little confused. So I understand why you still use the term, but to me, the terms are the same as like an analogy I would use is the way in America you call football soccer, and but the rest of the world, especially in Europe, is called football, right? And you know, it can translate to other things like football or whatever in maybe some uh, some other countries. But like I said, everything is kind of different. Everybody does things differently. So the way football is managed in America is different from the way it's managed in Europe. But that doesn't mean like that doesn't mean that England and Italy manage football the same way in america you just call it a different thing soccer right but in europe it's called football and the way they manage things like the leagues and things of that nature are different from the way in america where we have like playoffs and western conferences and eastern conferences but at the end of the day you're still playing the same sport the same rules so essentially it's the same sport but there are differences here and there in style production and the way it's being managed at the end of the day the countries still meet in international competition like the World Cup and the rules are the same. So that's how I view comics and manga or the same way I view soccer and football. Your differences, yes, but at the end of the day it's still the same sport, it's still the same uh, panels on a page telling a story. Essentially it's the same thing and I feel like once people start to think in that way they will understand that they have more freedom than they, that they think they do i've seen people in the comments contemplating what to call their comic whether they should give it a japanese name or they should give it an english name again you need to think okay think of where it's going to be published what makes the most sense why would you give your comic a japanese name if it's never going to be published in Jap in japan why would your comic be read right to left if it's never going to be published in Japan or a country with that reading orientation. The mistake is that people unnecessarily put themselves in a box when they have more freedom than they think they do. And once you start to think in this direction, you you tend to think uh, it more broad and have more original ideas or ideas that give more originality points. Again, I give uh, drop a video on how I view originality and how I think nothing is 100% original or 0% or original and I'll leave a, a link to that video. But you start to think of things that make your production, your work, your projects a little more original. When you stop thinking of okay, all my characters need to be Japanese or have the or need to look this way or need the character the story needs to take place in Japan and you start to do things that really haven't been done in the medium. Uh, so for instance, the character you're seeing here, uh, Jade, how many times have you seen a character that Japanese comic aesthetic who's a character in a hijab? How many times? Zero, right? And obviously I'm not just doing it for the superficial uh, appearance or the superficial look. I'm, you know, there is a, it's, it's a character. I'm not just doing it just to do it because it hasn't been done before. I don't want to go into much detail about the character and um, the Apple Black story in this video because it will just make this video unnecessarily long. But my point is give more originality points essentially. If you want to make a slice of life kind of thing, maybe a story that takes place in high school, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be that Japanese high school. You could do a story that takes place in, in America maybe and you look at American high schools and kind of base it off of that. That would give your story a whole lot more originality and also diversity because uh, American, Amer American school education 
the high schools, universities, it's diverse, right? So you start to see characters that you wouldn't otherwise see in this medium. It opens up room in not just diversity and ethnicity, but diversity in everything. Uh, sexuality, age, size, story. You start to tell stories that maybe wouldn't be done in the traditional uh, Japanese style or based off of their culture and the way they produ produce things. Maybe you start to bring it closer to something that speaks to you or to a new market a new audience and you, you essentially start to write not just what you see from other mangas and other anime but you start to write what you know that you might have not necessarily picked up from uh, other series alike or other series within that medium you start to get influenced by other things beyond just manga but comics and film and maybe you start to think of a way to kind of make, blend the two of maybe say how a certain director uh, directs his movies and uh, think of a way to kind of bring that and you can also bring in aspects from the Japanese way of creating comics the manga way if you will and kind of blend it all together in a way to make something completely original. I believe that once you start to think in this way, you start to open your mind and you start to come up with more original and diverse ideas and you come out of that box, not just ideas in story and art, but also ideas in the way you maybe even produce the work. A good book I recommend that you guys go read is Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud and I think this will also help a great deal. Especially if you're trying to get into comics and you want to make comics, I think this is one of those books that is 100% essential and I'll probably make a video uh, that talks about the book specifically. Before I drop the topic, I'm not saying don't make your comic about Japan, don't make your manga about Japan or have Japanese character. I'm not saying do that, but at least if you're going to do that, kind of do your research on the topic. You'll say you want to make a story about the samurais and things like that. At least do your research on that so that when you're creating the work, it has that sense of authenticity and you're not going to be called out for, for trying to be a wannabe or just a fanboy who's just drawing from uh, other comics alike and just doing what you see without re really knowing what you're talking about or what you're writing about. Write what you know and you can't write what you know if you don't know what you're writing about or creating. If you don't know anything about samurais, you can't effectively do a story about samurais or that era in Japan or things like that. Or, I mean, you can, but you wouldn't really get that respect. You kind of have a certain view of you and your work and that you know that I think that's where that whole idea of oh you have to be Japanese to make manga comes from is because there's some people that don't do the research they just want to make a comic they think they have an idea and they think they can make a comic and they just jump into it and you know maybe it's not so good and then they get called names and blah 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 blah, blah. you know how it goes I'm not saying you can't do these things I'm just saying that the one mistake is that people don't do the research and I think if you do the research, it will help whatever you are creating. I have a new comic coming out. It's called uh, Bacassi that I'm working on. And that will be very, very different from Apple Black. And I think based off of all the things that I've learned over time, you clearly see what I'm talking about with uh, Bacassi more so than uh, Apple Black, even though Apple Black is moving in that direction as I'm making more pages for it. You can clearly see that growth in story and art and just mine and the way I you know do things it's slightly different from the earlier uh, pages uh, if you look at the page now you look at the page from the past you can clearly see the differences in you know certain things that I do where I'm not trying to do it because oh certain shonen, uh, a shonen comic from the past have done it has done it a certain way I might be actually trying to come up with a completely new look and new way of doing certain things and that's my way that's under the umbrella of my style and you only start to think this way once you have done the research and truly understand that manga and comics are essentially the same and there are no rules and once you know that there are no rules you know that you're a little freer right and not necessarily no rules but like you know that you have more freedom than you thought prior I know not everybody will agree but uh, hopefully I, I got my point across as best as I could and I hope you guys understood it to a certain degree at least uh, if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below if you guys want to have a little discussion again you can talk in the comments below as well leave a like on this video if you haven't already uh, please subscribe I have a lot of cool videos coming soon uh, please hit that bell so you stay notified each time I upload absolutely anything you can follow me on my social media Instagram Facebook Twitter and all that good stuff every all the links you can possibly need will be in the description below 
Again, don't forget to check out Sad Day EM issue 72. It'll be free. It'll have some Matt Black stuff. It'll have some Bully Eater stuff. It'll have a lot of cool comics within the issue. And it'll have some have an interview with me as well as details on Apple Black Volume 2, including the Apple Black popularity poll and more. So don't forget to check that out. This is Manga, and I'm out.